Good morning, everyone, and welcome to uh, the service of Holy Communion. Yes, uh, it's not the first Sunday of the month, uh, but we're having Holy Communion. I, as a church family uh, here at Myrtle Grove, uh, we were not able to have Holy Communion on the first Sunday of the month. Uh, of course, last Sunday was Mother's Day, and we didn't have it then. So we put off having Holy Communion till today. So actually in our church to this morning, we're going to be celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion. And so we're going to do the same uh, with the people who uh, watch us on uh, our YouTube channel here. So if you have elements of uh, bread and juice, uh, or if you have crackers this morning, I'm using a cracker instead of bread, and that, that is perfectly fine. But uh, you might want to just stop the video and go ahead and get you some juice, uh, bread and crackers, whatever you can pull together. Bring it back, set it before you. I'm going to pray a prayer of consecration at the end, and we'll celebrate Holy Communion together. Big shout out to uh, Angie and I's favorite aunt in Mobile, Alabama, Aunt Carolyn Ellisor. We love you, praying for you, and hope you're doing better each and every day. Big shout out to a lot of folks out there who are going through very difficult times, people who've experienced death of loved ones and families, uh, people who are going, uh, <clears throat> recovering from surgeries or people going through treatments of cancer, number of different things that are going on in people's lives. And uh, it, I, I would encourage you that uh, send me an email. Uh, you can go on our uh, website uh, at, at the church dot, uh, uh, at the grove, excuse me, at the grove dot church. Uh, and my email address is there or just uh, in, in the comments below, uh, in, uh, on my Facebook page, send me a message or in the comments. Let me know what your prayer request is. How can I and the church family here pray for you? I have a group of people that meet every Sunday uh, the prayer team, and, and uh, they, they've been doing it for years and years, uh, and they're very dedicated to praying uh, for people's needs. And they keep it, they don't pray for you once, they keep you on the prayer chain, and they pray for you constantly until we hear how God has answered that prayer. And so let me know if there's a, a, a reason or need in your life, and we can lift you up in prayer. If you have your Bibles, would you turn with me to Mark's Gospel, the 14th chapter, beginning with verse 12. We're going to read where Jesus instituted uh, what we call the Lord's Supper, or the Eucharist. And it begins by, on the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb. Now Jesus and his disciples are going to Jerusalem. Uh, this is just a, uh, a few days before Christ will be crucified on the cross. And they're getting ready to sacrifice the Passover lamb. Amen. And more ways than one. Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet and follow you. Now, you, you would think that what men could, if, if they're in the city and they've got jars of water, that uh, that's going to be hard to pick out. Well, it's not hard to pick out because usually men didn't go and retrieve water. That was the women's work. Sorry, women, but that's, that, that's, that's true. So if you saw a man carrying a jar, a pitcher of water, uh, you knew who that was. So say to the owner of the house as you enter, the teacher said, where is my guest room where I might eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room finished and ready, make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve, and while they were reclining at the table eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one of them said to each other, Surely not I. It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man 
will go just as it is written about him. But woe to the man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, uh, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the, new, uh, of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Lord, may all the words of our mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in your sight. For we dedicate the hearing and the preaching of your word in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. Well, uh, <laughs> Uh, if uh, if you know anything about me at all, you 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 can probably tell that I'm a pastor who is a graveyard for many chickens, right? <laughs> that good old gospel word. In other words, this old boy loves to eat. Now, eating and drinking, of course, are essential for living. Uh, whether you are a human or an animal, uh, you've got to eat and drink. But in human living. They are more than necessities. You see, we can satisfy our hunger just by swinging through McDonald's and grabbing a value meal just to fill our stomach as we're going from one place to the other. And certainly that may satisfy that hunger, <clears throat> but it does little else for us. We eat together with our family and our friends. We share meals together at a church. I love those potluck dinners, right? Because eating and drinking are essentially social activities. Eating and drinking together help sort of cement our relationships as family. Uh, it cements those bonds as family and friends, and it strengthens our sense of community within the church. And so the old adage that a church that prays together stays together, I'd say that a church that has many potlucks together stays together and that is so true that's why we have festival meals we have birthday parties everybody loves that we go to wedding banquets we we uh, make plans to be with family and friends all centered around food because taking time to eat together and to be with each other is a sign that we value those relationships and that those relationships that we have as we break bread together as family and friends, that those relationships have deep meaning in our life. Food and drink feature largely in our human life, and so they also feature largely in the Bible. Indeed, biblical meals normally had a very special significance to them. Have you ever noticed that when Jesus eats with people, that he turns water into wine? Have you noticed that? He welcomes those unwelcomed by the rest of society, like tax collectors and sinners and prostitutes. The scribes and Pharisees had a problem with Jesus doing that. When Jesus eats with people like his friends, Jesus takes the opportunity to teach his disciples about the kingdom of God. And so Jesus rarely ever missed the opportunity when he's setting down with his disciples or he's sitting down with others and having a meal together and they're eating they're drinking together that he doesn't use that as an opportunity to teach something about the kingdom of God as we heard in our gospel lesson uh, just a few minutes ago that the first last supper Jesus performed with ordinary food and drink an act of Jewish prophetic symbolism you see, the bread that he took and broke was a sign of himself. He was to be given as a sacrifice on the cross for the sins of the whole world. The wine in the cup was a sign of his life's blood. It was to be poured out for all humanity for the forgiveness of sin. This would become the sign and the seal of the new covenant in Christ's blood. Jesus dramatically enacted his death in advance 
And he told his disciples what it meant so that they would be prepared for it as prepared as they could be. Jesus took an old Jewish meal that focused on God's mercy in the exodus of the people of the Hebrew people out of Egypt. And he transformed that meal, that symbolic meal, into an act that no longer looked to the past but look to the future. You see, Jesus taught that the bread and the cup, there are signs of his body and blood, that he was being offered as a sin sacrifice for the sin of the whole world. He would inaugurate in a new covenant, which was a new relationship between God and humanity. And there was the consequence of taking part of that celebration, eating the bread and drinking the wine meant that the disciples would have to share in the life and ministry of Christ. They would do what Jesus did. They would continue his ministry. You see, the bread was the body himself. The wine was his blood, his life. And all those who shared in that body and in that blood were to share as well in the kingdom of the Father. The disciples of Jesus went on eating and drinking together even after the death of Christ. In Acts chapter 2, read that. I love Acts chapter 2. That after the Holy Spirit had fallen and thousands received Christ, that whole Pentecostal movement, the church was birthed. It says that people came together and, and they would listen to the teaching of the apostles to the breaking of bread, to the sharing of food together. They brought everything together as they had in common and everyone who had need, their needs were taken care of. This was wonderful. Uh, this was a beautiful time. So the disciples continued this celebration, this holy meal together. They took the bread and the wine. They gave thanks to God over all that Jesus had done for them and all that he meant to them, and they shared in this ritual meal. Soon the, it, was, it had become to be called the Eucharist, which is a Greek word which means thanksgiving, because the prayer that they said over the bread and the wine was a thanksgiving for all that God had done for them in creation, all that God had done for them through redemption, through the cross, and all that God had continued to do in their common life. So it was an opportunity every time that they came together to break bread and drink of the cup, to share in Holy Communion, it was an opportunity to give thanks to God for all that God had done for them. And over time, Christians recognized clearly that the consequences of sharing in this meal was the obligation to continue to live out the mission of Jesus in their time and place. This was like food for their journey. This was a covenant meal that they committed together while they were waiting on the return of the Lord that they would continue the ministry and the mission to which Jesus had called and commissioned. You remember he said to go into all the world and to make disciples baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, and he would be with them always. Even in our ancient liturgy, the words, uh, we don't hardly use this, but in our ancient liturgy, it used to say, go and serve the Lord. You see, that became a part of the celebration in order to remind themselves that the whole purpose of the Eucharistic celebration is number one, to give glory to God for what God has done, to offer thanks for the sacrifice of Christ, what God has done for us in Christ by reconciling unholy people to a holy and righteous God through the blood of Jesus Christ. There's no other way, Jesus said. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There's no other way to the Father except through Jesus. And also the purpose of, of the celebration of the Eucharist, to give glory to God, to give thanks to Christ, and to be strengthened to go out and serve Christ in the world. So today in our celebration, we offer this invitation. Christ our Lord, 
invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with God and with one another. And so therefore, we offer up a prayer of confession. And I'm going to take just a moment and, and have a moment of silence. And would you just offer up a prayer? Whatever it is in your life that you and the Holy Spirit are dealing with, now's a good time to offer it up to the Lord, to ask for forgiveness, to ask for redemption, to ask for healing in your life. Would you pray with me? Let us pray together. Holy Spirit, come and fill our hearts and minds. Lord, through the breaking of the bread and through the sharing of the cup, may we be encouraged to give up our sin, to take upon ourselves your righteousness, to live according to your word, and to fulfill the mission to which you've called us in this life. Make it so, in Jesus' name, amen. And then after the invitation and the and the confession comes the pardon that's where i say that how wonderful it is that as children of god uh, praise the lord that we have been forgiven because it says that's that it's proof that while we were yet sinners christ died for us and that's proof of god's love toward us and then as a priest i say in the name of jesus christ you are forgiven. And you can say to me, in the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. And then comes this wonderful prayer. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. So with your elements there, with you and, your, and whoever is with you, your family, your spouse, children, we ask the Holy Spirit to be poured out into your home, to be poured out into your life, to be poured out upon the gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in his final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. All honor, glory, and power is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen and amen. I love that liturgy of Holy Communion. I want to say that to point, I, I, I wanted to say all that to point out the fact that this is not an event which simply draws us together here uh, uh, as an individual, but it focuses too on sending us out in Jesus' name to be a community of disciples. So as we gather together today as the body of Christ, the church, whether you come to a building and that's a church, or whether you're in your home, you're still a part of the church, which is the body of Christ. And so we're drawn together at God's table, but we're also recognized that we are also sent out as a community of disciples for Christ, refueled, refreshed, reinvigorated to serve Christ in the world. That's why we pray that make these gifts of bread and wine be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we might be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. You see, it doesn't make a lot of sense to me to understand this Holy Communion celebration as some kind of private holy moment for just me and God. I don't think that was the intent. This is a communal event where together we join ourselves with the life-giving death and resurrection of our Lord as we prepare to serve the Lord in the world. So we come to the table together. Today we give thanks for the Holy Communion which we share around the table of our Lord. We give thanks for God's presence through the bread and the wine, but we also give God thanks for the blessing of the presence of our brothers and sisters, our family who gather with us in life. We give thanks because the real presence of the Holy Spirit is at work 
<coughs> excuse me, in each and every one of us. At this and at every celebration of the Lord's Supper around the, uh, the world, every time the bread is broken and the cup is shared, Christ will be truly present in the body of his church. The challenge for us is that while the same presence renews and revives us at this holy meal, it's not a private affair. God is not just present for our own sake, but God is present for others as well. Christ will be truly present at our Holy Communion together. This celebration then is to drive us back out into the world where we are called to be truly present in his name, in the name of our Lord, present to ourselves and present to each other and to the needs of those around us. And this coming June, which is coming up real soon, Angie and I will have completed 14 years as the pastor uh, and pastoral family here at Myrtle Grove. 14 years going on 15. My, how time flies. But what a blessing it's been for me to serve Holy Communion to my church family, to, sit, to come together around the table, to remember, to offer thanksgiving, to be filled, and, and also to be reminded that we are the body of Christ called to the world to share the life and ministry of Jesus Christ. And so what a privilege it, it also has been over the last few years as we've come together on this YouTube channel uh, and because of COVID to celebrate Holy Communion with you and in your home. It's really a blessing to me. Well, I'm going to close with uh, something that I saw uh, on uh, social media. Uh, my, my fam some of my family uh, have uh, TikTok accounts and they were always sending me these little TikTok videos about food or funny stuff or animals and just crazy stuff sometimes. And it's a great source of, uh, of having fun and making jokes. And also I decided I'd get a TikTok channel and uh, all of my uh, videos that I've saved <laughs> all around food. And I've come up with, I, I've seen and watched some great recipes of learning how to cook things just by TikTok. It's called t uh, Food TikTok. And uh, I, I watch it all the time, love it. Well, there, there popped up in one of my feeds, sort of an inspirational quote. I don't take credit for it, but I read it yesterday and I wanted to share it with you today. Uh, I wanted to share it in, in, the, in the course of this sermon, but I didn't know really how it was going to fit in. So I'm just going to share it anyway and allow you to figure out how this works, how this fits for you. It was so interesting. It was one of those little videos to where you've seen all the scenes of the, the God's beautiful nature and little words would pop across the screen and this man in this low monotone voice said these words. He said, rivers, rivers do not drink their own water. Trees do not eat their own fruit. The sun does not shine on itself. And flowers do not spread their fragrance for themselves. Living for others is a rule of nature. We are all born to help each other. No matter how difficult it is, life is good when you are happy, but much better when others are happy because of you. Go in peace today, and may the peace of our Lord be with you. If you have the elements of Holy Communion, I want to encourage you to take those as we offer them up to the Lord. If you got your uh, elements of Holy Communion, we prayed the prayer of consecration over them. Ask them to be for us the body and blood of Christ. So if you take the bread and eat and share with those with you, And the cup of our Lord.
Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the body and blood of Christ as we come together around the table. And even those who are miles away listening to me through this medium uh, of uh, social media, Lord, you still connect us together as brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, as we come to the table together, help us to love one another, to support one another, to be there for each other. And Lord, help us to be encouraged, to be refueled, to be renewed and sent out into the world. For we ask in Christ's name, amen. Love you. Hope you have a great and blessed uh, Sunday. And may the Lord be with you and may his real presence bring you strength. Go in peace, as I said, and may the peace of Christ go with you in this day. Amen and amen.